A major obstacle to advancing your kettlebell training is a sloppy clean. Who wants to train when they're dealing with unnecessary pain and fear? And of course, I'm talking about when the kettlebell is swinging over and smashing and banging against your wrist and forearm. And a spick and span, one-arm kettlebell clean is key to helping ensure you can. Hi, I'm Shane Hines, Director of Fitness Education for Onnit, and I'm going to show you how to perform the kettlebell clean and how to make it a staple in your workouts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. The kettlebell clean is the transitional movement in moving the tool from the ground to overhead and to all around your body for access to greater variety. It's dynamic and explosive while being less technical than the Olympic weightlifting or barbell clean. It also trains hip and knee extension, which is necessary for power development. And with the one arm variation, you start to introduce rotation, which prepares you for more complex movements like flows. How to do the one arm kettlebell clean. There are three essential steps that will change everything in your kettlebell clean. Once you have them dialed in, you'll realize it's way simpler than it seemed. Step one, your stance. We're looking for an athletic stance, something in between a high hinge and an upright squat. With a high hinge, you end up getting too much or a lot, at least in the beginning, of an arc. With an upright squat, you have much more difficulty getting the elbow position that you need for a smooth clean and the kettlebell wrapping around your wrist without the smash and bang. So for your athletic stance, you're going to have your feet between hip and shoulder width apart. You're going to sit back with your hips and have your shoulders nice and broad, keeping eyes looking forward. This is as if you're ready to tackle someone. I'm getting into position to tackle. From that stance, we can then look at getting our kettlebell and prepared for the next piece of the movement. If you have a hard time getting down to the kettlebell in this athletic position, you can get a box or bench to put the kettlebell on to bring it up just a little bit higher while you're dialing this in. Step number two, your elbow position and the wrap. Your elbow is going to get pulled back in the transition and then you're going to punch up into the clean. Where a lot of people get messed up is flipping the kettlebell over. And a lot of that is determined less around what's happening at your hand and your wrist and more about where your elbow is. What we're looking for from that athletic stance is to pull the elbow back back behind you, almost as if you're doing a row, instead of a more traditional weightlifting type clean where you're drawing your elbows high. A big part of this is because when we draw our elbows high, we make a much bigger arc of the weight of the kettlebell, which is different than the circumference of a barbell, to get into position. The next piece is the wrap. You're going to pull the elbow back, you're gonna have your other hand coming up simultaneously, grabbing the kettlebell. See, I paused here in midair. Wrap it around my wrist and then drive that elbow forward as I punch through into a strong rack position. Step number three, your forearm and wrist position. Now your forearm is going to end vertical and we're looking for the wrist to be aligned with the forearm. Oftentimes we see people in a rack position with the wrist bent. The bent wrist starts to pull the forearm out of position and the kettlebell starts putting undue impact on the wrist. By creating alignment with our wrist and the forearm, we now connect the whole weight into the rest of our body so that we can support it better and prepare for transitional movement anywhere else that we want the kettlebell to be going. Also, when you're doing a wrap, we want the wrap coming around, you get a more effective punch when the wrist is aligned. Keep those knuckles up to the sky. That's what you're thinking, and that will help keep your wrist and forearm aligned nice and strong, which is reflective of a nice, strong, aligned upright spine. And in all this, after your stance, after your elbow position and the wrap, 
and your forearm and wrist position, it's about the wrap. Utilize the wrap, the wrap is key. Don't rush it. I often see a lot of people rushing this and going, no, 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 I don't need the other hand to help the kettlebell come around. I can do this very smoothly with a variety of weights without a hand. And I still use it because it helps reinforce the wrap of the kettlebell around rather than over. And that's not only for your benefit, but anybody else that you may be teaching as well. So to tie this all together, three steps. I get down into my athletic stance. I get a hold of the kettlebell on the inside of the handle. My other hand is aligned next to it. As I come up, I pull elbow into position, which is pull the elbow back as I bring the hand onto the kettlebell and wrap. The wrap happens as I punch into vertical position, vertical forearm, aligned wrist, knuckles to the sky, strong body. Now let's say you're still having a tough time getting this one arm cleaned down and finding a smooth transition in the wrap. We're gonna show you a modification to build up to that even further. In this one, we are going to go into that high hinge position. So instead of my athletic position, I'm going to go into a higher hinge where I'm going to open up space on the back of my legs, raise my hips up a little bit higher so that I can get down in a nice strong position as if I'm going to row, because that's exactly what I'm going to do. From there, we're going to take the kettlebell. I'm gonna have my other hand down as if I'm working to square my shoulders. And from here, I'm going to row the kettlebell up and then stand. So I'm just taking this one step at a time. I'm getting nice, strong connection through my legs, stability through my spine, and I row with the other hand underneath the kettlebell. From there, I'm going to drive through my hips. Now in this position, it's as if I'm holding on to the Master Blaster 3000. I'm in no rush. I can hit, hit this and just think pew, 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 pew. There's no rush going anywhere. This reinforces the wrap. And what we wanna reinforce with the wrap is from here, I just take my hand over to my forearm. Then I go into my punch. As I come back down, most often folks will start to get better at this nice clean, but then when they go out of it, it turns into a big Dah! When in fact, coming back down is part of the key to doing it smoother coming up. So I've come up to my rack position, then what I'm going to do is have my hand on the kettlebell, pull my elbow back into position, Master Blaster 3000, and then from there, smoothly bring it back down. So I'm high hinged, I row, hand on kettlebell, stand, no rush, Master Blaster 3000, wrap, punch, hand at the kettlebell, pull back, and down. And you just work through this variation, and this will set you up, and before you know it, you'll start getting smoother and smoother, and you won't even have to think about it while getting into the one-arm kettlebell clean that we've been showing you how to work. Sometimes you don't feel focused and alert in the gym and your workout can suffer as a result. New Alpha Brain pre-workout was designed specifically for athletes and gym goers and supports focus, power, and endurance. It's the ultimate way to charge up your mind and body. Use the coupon code GETONIT to get 10% off Alpha Brain pre-workout at onit.com. Now, let's get back to the video. Now we talked about the one arm variation in particular really opening you up to being able to do more rotation and potentially flows. And this is going to be the progression from our basic clean. So what we're going to do is we're gonna intentionally rotate into position. So you're still going to get into your athletic position, but this time you're gonna take your opposite hand back in rotation as you reach down to get the kettlebell. From here, I am going to come up into my clean because I've got my clean down now, so I don't need my other hand. And as I rotate up, I am then going to intentionally rotate back away from my straight position facing forward. But as I do that, I'm going to hold this hip in place. 
So I'm gonna watch that I'm not over-rotating through my knees or through my legs. You're gonna feel this in your core. Rotate back. And then I'm gonna rotate in the opposite direction. And I'm going to keep this opposite side hip facing forward. So it's almost like I'm doing a rotational crunch. Not crunch this way, but at a 45 degree angle. Then I'm gonna pull back in the opposite side, control that hip, and then I'm gonna come out and down. And I'm gonna land that kettlebell down. After landing that kettlebell down, I've rotated back out so that the full movement looks like And once it gets smoother, your transitions aren't as choppy, but that's because you've got control over your hips, you're controlling your rotation, and then we start getting more dynamic and it sets you up to be able to move into other progressions for flow, such as where you're starting to work with greater arcs of movement, but you can control that kettlebell smoothly wrapping from any position that you're working with while introducing more dynamic variations and explosiveness into your training. And whoever thought cleaning couldn't be fun. Whether looking for a smoother, safer, less painful training experience with the basics or opening the floodgates to exploration and flow, make the most of your one-arm kettlebell clean for a more enjoyable and exciting training experience. Thanks for watching. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for more. And for an article guide to the one-arm kettlebell clean, click the link in the description.